Well, back to Panola now for another story. From well, my apologies there. Um, we are having some technical difficulties. Perhaps a, a miracle is needed. But an essential part of the canonization is something known as a reliquary. It's an object usually highly artistic and it involves something from the saint. In Mary MacKillop's case, it's a few strands of her hair contained in a carved red gum cross. It was made in Panola out of an old fence post and true to Mary MacKillop's life story, the creation of her reliquary is quite a tale in itself. I've always loved wood from a childhood. I remember my first present as a child. My dad gave me a pocket knife and I carve the back of pine trees in, in Paris. You know, you go in the park and play soccer and I would pick up bark and then carve a, a little boat. In Guy de Tau's workshop, an angel is taking shape. It could have been a flying bird or a feminine form, two of his favourite things. But sometimes the sculptor says it can at first be difficult to understand what the wood wants to be. I would see a piece of wood and it might talk or it might not talk. I like that piece of wood but I don't understand that language. I don't know what that wood is telling me. So I'll pick it, put it in the backyard and uh, do something else for weeks, month, a year, and then suddenly I remember that piece, go to that piece, and then an hour later, the sculpture is already started. The piece of red gum sat in Guy de Tau's backyard for two years before he knew it was an angel. The French sculptor has been carving out a niche for himself and his artworks in the southeast township of Panola. He's had a remarkable career, starting out as a dancer in both Europe and the UK and in the late 80s with the Australian Dance Theatre. Perfect training, he argues, for a sculptor. And although there aren't too many Parisians in Panola, the story of how one came to be here, he says, makes perfect sense. First word I would call, love. I fell in love with a beautiful dancer called Shelley. Linden. Uh, I was in, in, in England and f fall in love with her, come and visit her. I arrive at the airport in Adelaide and I just fall in love with Australia. I, it took me 10 minutes driving from the airport to the Adelaide Hill and I say, I belong here. Now Guy de Tau has created something for a woman adored by millions, a cross fashioned out of red gum for the canonisation of Mary MacKillop. It's called a reliquary. It features a stained glass centre by another local artist, Gavin Tobin. The base was fashioned by local farmer and woodcarver Andy Clifford. But to the religious, it's the strands of Mary MacKillop's hair inside that make it special. A, a reliquary has to have something from the, the scent, something belonging to them in, in their clothes maybe, or in their in the, in the makeup, in their in the bodies, hair, which is my macula, or sometimes bones. It's happened that some, some scent in, in France, it's, it's the bones of, of that scent that's a reliquary. He says an artist in Panola was an obvious choice for the job. The wood used came from near where Guy de Tau says Mary MacKillop worked as a governess. It was originally a fence post. Mary MacKillop's life's work, helping the poor and disadvantaged, provided the inspiration. I was fascinated by that, that, that woman. Also the fact that, and that talks to me as an artist, that she rebels against the hierarchy. She got excommunica excommunicated because she felt something was not right. And I love that. 
The reliquary plays an important role in the canonization. It will be presented to the Pope himself, though, like the woman it represents, Didato says things haven't been straightforward. Originally, the base was made of 10 kilograms of local dolomite, but then he found the person presenting it would stand in line for five hours holding it before giving it to the Pope. Much too big a cross to bear. He is naturally honoured to have been chosen, but interestingly, what makes Guy de Tau happiest is not the fame, it's the chance to acknowledge the church paid him for his work. Very rare when I have a, a someone wanting to buy my work that, that would say, it's not enough, and they give me more. That is amazing, that is beautiful. The church ensuring that a poor artist didn't go starving. Surely Mary MacKillop herself would have approved. <laughs>